Morning. Pagan mean brarian. Coffee. Apothecary. Uh, today I want to talk about selkies because I realize I have brought this up a few times and I have left people lost in wonderment about what I'm talking about. Um, this is actually a really popular mythos in the northern parts of the world. Um, we hear it in North America and Japan and Russia and the stories stay predominantly to two types of the stories, which are both fucking terrifying. Um, generally, we hear this story about seals and then foxes and then we, the farther we get towards um, Europe, we also hear this about swans and bears. I know these animals may not seem terrifying, but they really, really are. I mean, we, we see them in art and they're like, beautiful and yay, oh, pretty sulky. Look. Yeah, she's lovely, that swan lady. Um, and let me tell you the story first, because uh, it, well, the first one generally goes something like this, which is that either a human falls in love with a selkie or a selkie falls in love with a human. They take off their animal skin and uh, so that they can marry said human or are forced to marry said human. And then eventually this skin is either destroyed by their spouse or found by their child who then leaves and goes to sea again, which in itself is pretty damn horrifying. I mean, someone just destroyed your skin and trapped you forever or you lost your child forever. That's fantastic. Okay, we got the basic gist of it, but can we talk about how terrifying the majority of these animals are? Like, bears, I mean, we all get that one, right? Like, bears are scary. You can shoot one and it will continue to eat you. Um, seals, though, are also terrifying. There is a reason uh, why whalers back in the day used to have to sneak up on the baby ones. It's because a, a seal will beat you to death death with its tail. These things weigh hundreds of pounds when they are fully grown. Um, you don't want to fuck with the seal. Don't do it. Just, just don't. Leave, leave them alone. Let them chill out, okay? Because they're not, uh, they're not hurting you right now. But if you fuck with one and they will. Or swans. Like, yeah, graceful birds, long neck, they're great. I, I got one back here behind me. Uh, did you know that swans have a bone in their wings that is specifically made for beating things to death. It's like a giant fucking club. Uh, swans will fuck you up. Uh, I, the, imagine a group of them after you. Uh, if you. If you've ever been in a group of geese, you know what I'm talking about. This is not a place that you want to be in the middle of a bunch of angry swans. Also, they have teeth. Uh, I don't know if you know that, but inside that little beak, teeth. It's upsetting. The only stories that really get how upsetting these animals are are the ones about foxes. And we hear these in um, the First Peoples tribes of North America, and we also hear them in Japan. In North America, uh, the stories we hear about the fox selkie start off in the oldest versions of basically the fox selkie shows up at the human's house uh the human falls in love with them she sheds her skin and then she just straight up leaves after he falls in love with her because he complains that she smells like well a fox uh power to you lady uh dude just complained about something that like you cannot change a basic part of who you are yeah get the fuck out of there um and later, as we discussed before, uh, she becomes kind of demonized as the story is retold because she ends up becoming the Aurora Borealis or the Northern Lights, uh, which were believed to be the souls of the dead. The Japanese version of this story is really, really similar. Um, we don't have the initial part per se, but it is a woman who is part fox. Um, I don't know. It's complicated how she becomes this way. Sometimes she's born that way. Sometimes she 
perform some sort of ritual. We won't get into the magic of that. And then eventually she too becomes um, part of the sky or part of the, the Northern Lights. Um, uh, she becomes what's called Inari, which is like a nine-tailed fox, which in these versions of the story is an actual demon who may possess you and cause you to do awful things. Um, however, she still has her own temples. They give her gifts, usually like rice and stuff. Um, this is wise, probably, um, because, you know, don't piss off the selkie. That's, that's the moral of my story here. Don't do it. Just leave the selkie alone, okay? Leave its skin alone. Leave the animal alone. Don't get possessed. Don't, don't try to make it human. Let the weirdos be weird, okay? Just, just, do you want someone taking your skin? No. 